A lot of randomly generated music isn't really that random at all. It's often created by adding elements of chance to musical material created by, spoiler alert, a real composer, not a computer or algorithm. So it's really exciting to me when I discover a new way of generating music that actually comes from randomness, without such blatant intervention. Doubly exciting when such a process can produce many different styles and genres of music, and triply exciting when this process is not some esoteric procedure solely navigable by academics, but an unreasonably simple set of steps with an intuitive visual explanation. I'm Polycorn Productions, and this is the first video in my new series on computer-generated music. In this video, I'll cover how music can be generated by a process known as a cellular automaton. A note before we start, this video is based on the Wolfram Tones project by the Wolfram Foundation, and often uses it as an example because it's the best documented use of this technique. However, the process of generating music using cellular automata is independent of Wolfram Tones or any other project. Of course, before we start employing cellular automata to write our symphonies and soundtracks, we should first understand exactly what they are. Imagine conjuring an empty grid of cells on a plane, such that each cell can either be black or white. In order to decide how each cell should be colored, we come up with a rule scheme. The color of a given cell will be determined by the colors of the three cells above it. Every possible configuration of these three cells is associated with either black or white. As we move through the grid, we color each cell according to these rules, a process that can last as long as we wish. A particularly famous rule set is Rule 30, which is what you're looking at right now. Notice how the distribution of black and white cells looks almost random, despite the simplicity of the process that colored them. Now, let's make some little photo editing adjustments to the grid. We'll start by cropping off the sides. Then, we'll rotate it clockwise by 90 degrees. Look familiar? We can associate the vertical axis with pitch space and the horizontal axis with time, much like a piano roll style MIDI editor. Let's play it, shall we? What amazing composition has the computer bestowed upon us? Okay, so it sounded experimental. For reference, this is an example of the music created by Wolfram Tones. So what's the difference here? To start, Wolfram Tones uses a larger rule set. Instead of only considering the three cells above, it looked at the top five. Because of that, chaos with more structure can be generated. But even that still sounds like in order to create anything somewhat musical, a number of operations must be performed on the grid. An example is only playing notes from certain scales. In the example you just heard, every cell along the vertical axis corresponded to a new semitone such that it formed a chromatic scale. Although this is how piano roll editors are organized in digital audio workstations, it doesn't quite work as well in this context. A more consonant set of notes, like the major or minor scale, is usually chosen. Next, a bunch of tweaks are applied at the cellular level. Different generators use different rules, but a particularly common one is replacing a series of successive notes at the same pitch with a single, longer note. This makes the music sound less artificial and creates more complex rhythm. These tweaks are what allow the same random noise to be turned into any genre. Of course, the rules that lead through a certain genre need to be handpicked beforehand, which somewhat negates the process of generating the music procedurally. Of course, because different genres use different instruments, the last operation is instrumentation. For genres that use multiple instruments, the generated notes must be divided into voices and then distributed among the instruments. Finally, new music, not random noise, has been generated. Although this result is incredible given the simplicity of the process, this technique has a few disadvantages. First. Some human intervention is still required. Using Wolfram Tones as an example, humans had to program the drum beats, had to create the list of scales, had to handpick the rules that specified each genre. Because of this, no new genres can be created, meaning that the results of the generator are biased both by our previous musical tradition and our conception of genre. Next, the music is, well, random. This technique lacks both the ability to generate large-scale structure, including modulation, and a strong grasp of melody and harmony problems addressed by more advanced models. Its compositional abilities lie somewhere between a human composer and a random number generator. Of course, the fact that anything remotely musical can be hewn from the computational void by such a simple process is nothing short of magic. It also illustrates the often surprising link between computing science and music, or 
in a broader context, between science and art. As we explore the many ways of creating music procedurally over the coming videos, keep this connection in mind.